Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the Michigan City Public Library podcast. I'm Miss Dana, your host, and today's theme is Pride. Whether you're a member of the LGBTQIA community like I am, or you're a proud ally, we welcome you to our library. We have many resources for those questioning their identity or for those who are just looking to learn something more about something new. You are safe and valid. Today, we will be talking about exciting events for summer and a large variety of Pride books. Starting with upcoming library events, beginning in June is the month-long Edwin Levitin Art Exhibit. Local artist Edwin Levitin has several pieces on our walls throughout the month of June. He devoted his working years to design and color in the textile field, and at age 77, translated his thoughts onto canvas. Color, and perhaps a bit of whimsy, is what he hopes to achieve, and if you've already been in to see it, you know that he's well met his goal. The crisp, vibrant colors stand out no matter where you are when you see them. The pieces just draw your attention. Next, our library has recently organized a local chapter of Warm Up America. This is a nationwide group of volunteers who knit and crochet handmade afghans for those in need. Afghans are made one section at a time, following a few simple guidelines, making this fun and easy to be a part of. You can pick up a brochure at the library or visit Warm Up America's website for details on knitting or crocheting 7-inch by 9-inch sections of a medium-weight acrylic yarn. You can also stop into the Needle Arts Club every Monday at 5.30 for advice, help, and to exchange materials. They have veteran crocheters and knitters with extra supplies to help you get started. And you're always welcome to work on your own projects as well. And finally, for adults, we have Friday afternoon at the movies. Join us on Friday, June 24th at 2 p.m. for West Side Story. Love at first sight strikes when young Tony spots Maria at a high school dance in 1957, New York City. Their burgeoning romance helps to fuel the fire between the warring Jets and Sharks, two rival gangs vying for control of the streets. This is rated PG-13. For kids, we have tons of fun with the summer reading program. Starting June 12th, download a log off our website or stop in to register to track your reading. For every 10 hours you read, read to someone else, or listen to someone read, you'll receive a chance in the raffle. Record your time and choose a raffle prize you'd like to win. You'll also get a free book after your first 10 hours. Adults and teens are also more than welcome to join in the program. Join us for Chalk the Walk on Monday, June 13th from 1 to 2 p.m. Help us decorate the library sidewalks with art. Chalk is provided, but be sure to dress for mess and weather. Our amazing summer reading kickoff program is Wednesday, June 15th at 10 a.m. The Magic of Steve Kellogg. Join us for a hilarious and entertaining magic show by Steve Kellogg. It's fun for the entire family. Also on Wednesday, June 15th at 4 p.m. is our next Tinkercad class. Design, remix, and explore your creativity with Tinkercad as you learn how to make your own 3D print and get it printed for free. Build a castle, design an underwater scene, make a model of your favorite animal, and print it in your favorite color, all for free, for ages 9 to 17. Every Thursday at 10 a.m. during summer reading, we will be showing an under-the-sea movie. On June 16th, we have Finding Nemo. June 29th is Finding Dory. June 30th is Shark Tale. July 7th is The Little Mermaid. July 14th is Luca, and July 18th is Moana. Each movie will have a themed craft and refreshments, and arriving on time will give you a chance to win your own copy of the movie. Join us again for in-person story time on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. on June 22nd and on. Stories, crafts, and activities for children aged birth through five accompanied with an adult. On Tuesdays at 3.30 p.m., we have Open Lab. Create, discover, and tinker with Lego We Do, Micro Bits, Paper Circuits, Ozobots, and more. For kids aged 6 to 17, build a moving seesaw with Legos, drive an Ozobot to the goal, or put together an origami robot. Imagination is the limit. 
We have a lot going on during summer, so please join us. You can find a complete list of events with times on our website. It was hard to narrow down which queer books to feature because there have been so many published in recent years. Every reader should try to diversify their bookshelves, and utilizing the library is one of the easiest ways to do so, whether you're looking for LGBT books or books by BIPOC authors. For a more extensive list of Pride books, check the circulation displays for more ideas and information on Pride. First for adult fiction is The Gunkle by Stephen Rowley. Patrick, or Gay Uncle Patrick, Gup for short, has always loved his niece, Maisie, and nephew, Grant. That is, he loves spending time with them when they come out to Palm Springs for week-long visits or when he heads home to Connecticut for the holidays. But in terms of caretaking and relating to two children, no matter how adorable, Patrick is honestly a bit out of his league. So when tragedy strikes and Maisie and Grant lose their mother— and Patrick's brother has a health crisis of his own, Patrick suddenly finds himself taking on the role of primary guardian. Despite having a set of gunkel rules ready to go, Patrick has no idea what to expect, having spent years barely holding on after the loss of his great love, a somewhat stalled career, and a lifestyle not so suited to a six- and nine-year-old. Quickly realizing that parenting, even if temporary, isn't solved with treats and jokes, Patrick's eyes are open to a new sense of responsibility and the realization that sometimes even being larger than life means you're unfailingly human. You can find the gunkle in the adult fiction section under Rowley Stephen. Next is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. Our story begins in 1902 at the Brookhants School for Girls. Flo and Clara, two impressionable students, are obsessed with each other and with a daring young writer named Mary McLean, the author of a scandalous best-selling memoir. To show their devotion to Mary, the girls establish their own private club and call it the Plain Bad Heroine Society. They meet in secret in a nearby apple orchard, the setting of their wildest happiness and ultimately of their macabre deaths. This is where their bodies are discovered with a copy of Mary's book splayed beside them, the victims of a swarm of stinging, angry yellow jackets. Less than five years later, the Brookhand School for Girls closes its doors forever, but not before three more people mysteriously die on the property, each in a most troubling way. Over a century later, the now-abandoned and crumbling Brookhance is back in the news when Wonderkind writer Merritt Emmons publishes a breakout book celebrating the queer feminist history surrounding the haunted and cursed Gilded Age institution. Her best-selling book inspires a controversial horror film adaption starring celebrity actor and lesbian it girl Harper Harper playing the ill-fated heroine Flo, opposite B-list actress and former child star Audrey Wells as Clara. But as Brookhance opens its gates once again, our three modern heroines arrive on set to begin filming. Past and present become grimly entangled, or perhaps just grimly exploited, and soon it's impossible to tell where the curse leaves off and Hollywood begins. You can find Plain Bad Heroines in the adult fiction section under Danforth Emily M. Next is Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Esther is a stowaway. She's hidden herself in the librarian's book wagon in an attempt to escape the marriage her father has arranged for her, a marriage to the man who was previously engaged to her best friend, her best friend who she was in love with, her best friend who was just executed for possession of resistance propaganda. The future American Southwest is full of bandits, fascists, and queer librarian spies on horseback trying to do the right thing. You can find Upright Women Wanted in the adult fiction section under Gailey, Sarah. And lastly for adult fiction is Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. Lake Geneva, 1816. 19-year-old Mary Shelley is inspired to write a story about a scientist who creates a new life form. 
In Brexit Britain, a young transgender doctor called Rye is falling in love with Victor Stein, a celebrated professor leading the public debate around AI and carrying out some experience of his own in a vast underground network of tunnels. Meanwhile, Ron Lord, just divorced and living with his mom again, is set to make his fortune launching a new generation of sex dolls for lonely men everywhere. Across the Atlantic in Phoenix, Arizona, a cryogenics facility houses dozens of bodies of men and women who are medically and legally dead, but waiting to return to life. What will happen when Homo sapiens is no longer the smartest being on the planet? In Fiercely Intelligent Prose, Jeanette Winterson shows us how much closer we are to that future than we realize. Funny and furious, bold and clear-sighted, Frankenstein is a love story about life itself. You can find Frank Kistein in the adult fiction section under Winterson Jeanette. Moving into young adult, first is a much anticipated release, I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. Chloe Green is so close to winning. After her moms moved her from SoCal to Alabama for high school, she spent the past four years dodging gossipy classmates and the administration of Willow Grove Christian Academy. The thing that's kept her going? Winning valedictorian. Her only rival? Prom queen Shara Wheeler, the principal's perfect progeny. But a month before graduation, Shara kisses Chloe and vanishes. On the furious hunt for answers, Chloe discovers she's not the only one Shara kissed. There's also Smith, Shara's longtime quarterback sweetheart, and Rory, Shara's bad boy neighbor with a crush. The three have nothing in common except Shara and the annoyingly cryptic notes she left behind, but together they must untangle Shara's trail of clues and find her. It'll be worth it if Chloe can drag Shara back before graduation and beat her fair and square. Thrown into an unlikely alliance, chasing a ghost through parties, break-ins, puzzles, and secrets revealed on monogrammed stationery, Chloe starts to suspect there might be more to the small town than she thought. And maybe, probably not, but maybe, more to Shara, too. You can find I Kissed Shara Wheeler in the young adult display area under McQuiston Casey. Next is The Midnight Girls by Alicia Jasinska. In a snow-cloaked kingdom, two wicked rivals secretly compete for the pure heart of a prince, only to discover they might be falling for each other. Carnival season is a time for mischief and revelry. For the next few weeks, all will be winter balls, glittery disguises, and nightly torch-lit sleigh parties. Unbeknownst to the merrymakers, two uninvited girls join the fun. Zosia and Marinka are drawn to each other the moment they meet until they discover their rivals, who both have their sights set on the prince's heart. If one consumes a pure heart, she'll gain measurable power. Marinka plans to bring the princess back to her patron in order to prove herself, while Zosia is determined to take his heart and its power for her own. Their ambition turns into a magical contest with both girls vying to keep the prince out of each other's grasp, even as their attraction to one another grows. But their attempts on his life draws the attention of the city that would die for him, and suddenly their escalating rivalry might cost them not just their love for each other, but both their lives. You can find the Midnight Girls in the YA display area under Jasinska Alicia. Next is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrienne Tooley. Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation, but after committing the worst magical sin, she's exiled by the ruling coven and cursed with the inability to love. The only way she can get those feelings back, even for just a little while, is to steal love from others. Ren is a source, a rare kind of person who is made of magic despite being unable to use it herself. Sources are required to train with the coven as soon as they discover their abilities, but Ren, the only caretaker to her ailing father, has spent her life hiding in secret. When a magical plague ravages the queendom, Ren's father falls victim. To save him, Ren proposes a bargain. If Tamsin will help her catch the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, then Ren will give Tamsin her love for her father. 
Of course, love bargains are a tricky thing, and these two have a long, perilous journey ahead of them. That is, if they don't kill each other first. You can find sweet and bitter magic in the young adult area under Thule, Adrian. And finally, for young adults, is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. Felix's love has never been in love, and yes, he's painfully aware of the irony. He desperately wants to know what it's like and why it seems so easy for everyone but him to find someone. What's worse is that, even though he is proud of his identity, Felix also secretly fears that he's one marginalization too many. Black, queer, and transgender— to get his own happily ever after. When an anonymous student begins sending him transphobic messages after publicly posting Felix's dead name alongside images of him before he transitioned, Felix comes up with a plan for revenge. What he didn't count on, his catfish scenario landing him in a quasi-love triangle. But as he navigates his complicated feelings, Felix begins a journey of questioning and self-discovery that helps redefine his most important relationship, how he feels about himself. Felix Ever After is an honest and layered story about identity, falling in love, and recognizing the love you deserve. You can find Felix Ever After in the young adult area under Calendar Kaysen. Moving to juvenile fiction, we have The List of Things That Will Not Change by Rebecca Steed. After her parents' divorce, Bia's life became different in many ways, but she can always look back at the list she keeps in her green notebook to remember the things that will stay the same. The first and most important, mom and dad will always love Bia and each other. When dad tells Bia that he and his boyfriend Jesse are getting married, Bia is thrilled. Bia loves Jesse, and when he and dad get married, she'll finally have something she's always wanted, a sister. Even though she's never met Jesse's daughter, Sonia, Bia is sure that they'll be just like sisters anywhere. As the wedding day approaches, Bia will learn that making new family brings questions, surprises, and joy. You can find the list of things that will not change in the J Fiction section under Steed Rebecca. Next is Totally Joe by James Howe. Meet Joe Bunch, lovable misfit and celebrity wannabe from Paintbrush Falls, New York. Like his longtime best friends, Addie, Skeezy, and Bobby, Joe's been called names all his life. So when he's given the assignment to write his alpha biography, the story of his life from A to Z, Joe has his doubts. This whole thing could be serious ammunition for bullying if it falls into the wrong hands. But Joe discovers there's more to the assignment and his life than meets the eye. Especially when he gets to the letter C, which stands for Colin Briggs, the coolest guy in seventh grade, seriously, and Joe's secret boyfriend. By the time Joe gets to the letter Z, he's pretty much bared his soul about everything. And Joe's okay with that because he likes who he is. He's totally Joe, and that's the best thing for him to be. Here is an exuberant, funny, totally original story of one boy's coming out and coming of age. You can find Totally Joe in the J Fiction section under How James. Next is A Home for Goddesses and Dogs by Leslie Connor. It's a life-altering new year for 13-year-old Lydia when she uproots to a Connecticut farm to live with her aunt following her mother's death. Aunt Brat and her jovial wife, Eileen, and their ancient live-in landlord, Elleroy, are welcoming and a little quirky. Lydia's struggle for a sense of belonging in her new family is highlighted when the women adopt a big yellow dog just days after the girl's arrival. Wasn't one rescue enough? Lydia is not a dog person, and this one is trouble. He's mistrustful and slinky. He pees in the house, escapes into the woods, and barks at things unseen. His new owners begin to guess about his unknown past. Meanwhile, Lydia doesn't want to be difficult, and she doesn't mean to keep secrets, but there are things she's not telling, like why the box of paper stuff she keeps under her bed is so important, and why the hole in the wall behind a poster in her room is getting bigger, and why something she took from the big yellow dog might just be the key to unraveling his mysterious past, but at what cost? You can find A Home for Goddesses and Dogs in the J Fiction section under Connor Leslie. 
Last for juvenile fiction is Starcrossed by Barbara D. Maddie, a star student and passionate reader, is delighted when her English teacher announces the eighth grade will be staging Romeo and Juliet. And she is even more excited when, after a series of events, she finds herself playing Romeo opposite Gemma Braithwaite's Juliet. Gemma, the new girl at school, is brilliant, pretty, outgoing, and if that wasn't enough, British. As the cast prepares for opening night, Maddie finds herself growing increasingly attracted to Gemma and confused, since she just had a crush on a boy named Elijah days before. Is it possible to have a crush on both boys and girls? If that wasn't enough to deal with, things backstage at the production are starting to rival any Shakespearean drama. In this sweet and funny look at the complicated nature of middle school romance, Maddie learns how to be a lead player in her own life. You can find Starcrossed in the juvenile fiction section under D. Barbara. And last is picture books. First is Pride Puppy by Robin Stevenson and Julie McLaughlin. A young child and their family are having a wonderful time celebrating Pride Day, meeting up with Grandma, making new friends, and eating ice cream. But then something terrible happens. Their dog gets lost in the parade. Luckily, there are lots of people around to help reunite the pup with his family. This rhyming alphabet book tells a lively story with rich, colorful illustrations that will have readers poring over every detail as they spot items starting with each of the letters of the alphabet. An affirming and inclusive book that offers a joyful glimpse of a pride parade and the vibrant community that celebrates this day each year. You can find Pride Puppy in the picture book section under Stevenson Robin. Next is My Two Moms by Claudia Harrington. My Two Moms is the story of a normal day in Elsie's life. When classmate Lenny visits her home, he discovers Elsie has two moms. Who gets her splinters out? Mommy. Who gets her cat out of a tree? Mom. Who reads to her? Mommy and Mom. Lenny realizes love makes a family. Along with My Two Moms is My Two Dads by the same author, Claudia Harrington. When classmate Lenny visits Jazz's home, he discovers Jazz has two dads. Who makes her dinner? Poppy. Who braids her hair? Dad. Who taught her how to dance? Poppy and Dad. Lenny realizes that love is what makes a family. You can find both titles in the picture book section under Harrington, Claudia. Next is Stella Brings the Family by Miriam B. Schiffer. Stella's class is having a Mother's Day celebration, but what's a girl to do with two dads? It's not that she doesn't have someone who helps her with her homework or tucks her in at night. Stella has her papa and daddy who take care of her and a whole gaggle of other loved ones who make her feel special and supported every day. She just doesn't have a mom to invite to the party. Fortunately, Stella finds a unique solution to her party problem in this sweet story about love, acceptance, and the true meaning of family. You can find Stella Brings the Family in the picture book section under Schiffer, Miriam B. And the last Pride picture book is Pride, the story of Harvey Milk and the Rainbow Flag by Rob Sanders. In this deeply moving and empowering true story, young readers will trace the life of the gay pride flag from its beginnings in 1978 with social activist Harvey Milk and designer Gilbert Baker to its spanning of the globe and its role in today's world. Award-winning author Rob Sanders' stirring text and acclaimed illustrator Stephen Salerno's evocative images combine to tell this remarkable and undertold story. A story of love, hope, equality, and pride. You can find pride in the picture book section under Sanders' Rob. Pride has a long and difficult history full of violence, but also of overwhelming hope. And I hope these stories find a home with you. Whether you are queer or not, you are welcome to come to the library for anything. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye!